We have some extra considerations to think about when we're looking for errors in hypothesis tests that involve a binomial distribution. And this is mostly because it's a discrete one. So it's difficult to get an integer to match the exact significance level that you're looking for, so you'll go for the, the integer that gives you the closest number. So if you remember back in our very first video on hypothesis testing, video 2.1, we um, got a situation where we were looking at a 5% significance level, and when x got um, above 8, it was uh, when it was 8 or more, um, it hadn't dropped below the 5% yet, but when it was 7 or more, it did. So we accepted the critical region as being x greater than or equal to 7. Okay, So this actually gives us a 1.7% sig significance level rather than a 5%. The probability of it happening is, isn't the 5% that we were looking for, it's the 0.17. But it's, the, um, it's the, the, the closest thing that we can get below our 5%. We can't get an exact number because we're looking at discrete variables. We can't go between the 7 and 8. So the probability of a type 1 error. Now remember, this means the probability that we um, accepted it, uh, sorry, it, when we rejected it, given that the null hypothesis was true. So the probability of this actually happening is the 0 0.172. That's our actual significance level. So it's not the 5% that was um, stated as the significance level in the test. That 5% is called the nominal significance level, or the, the level that you've been nominated to find in the test. But the actual significance level is the, the probability of your critical region happening. So here's an example. A scientist that su suspects that lab technicians are reluctant to record the last decimal place of a measurement as a zero. For example, recording a 4.10 or a, a 3.20 or a 0 0.30. So she takes a random sample of 40 measurements and counts the number x which end in a zero. We want to set up a hypothesis test. So we have the null hypothesis is that the probability is equal to 0 0.1. If it was um, evenly distributed, um, then every digit would have a, an equally likely chance of coming up, so it would be one-tenth. And the null hypothesis, we, we, are, we suspect that for a zero, the probability of it coming up as the last digit is actually smaller if people are reluctant to um, record that zero in the last place. So under the null hypothesis, we'd have a binomial distribution with 40 trials and a probability of success 0.1. Okay, so part B, show that for a 10% significance level, the null hypothesis would be rejected if x equals 1, but not if x equals 2. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, using our binomial calculations, is what we've got there. This comes to 0.08047. But the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 following the same sorts of calculations is 0.2228. So the 0 0.08047 is less than the 0.1 or the 10% significance level that we're looking for. That would give us um, the conclusion that the null hypothesis is rejected. But uh, the 0.2228, that's more than 10%, so the null hypothesis would not be rejected. Okay, part C, find the probability of a type 1 error. So this means we have a rejection region of x is less than or equal to 1. Probability of a type 1 error means we're looking for the probability that we land within that rejection region given that the null hypothesis was true, given that the probability is equal to 0.1. So that is the calculation we just worked out in part B. So the probability of a type 1 error is actually 0.0805. This means that our actual significance level wasn't the 10% in the question, it was 8.005. We can't get closer than that to 10%. If you go to the 2, it goes above the 10%.